Hello, welcome to The Big Fight, where this week we're going to talk about one of those big themes that emerged as a major talking point this week. And I suspect it's something that you're going to keep hearing along, uh, hearing about for a long, long time. And that's the politics of vendetta. The opposition has been saying increasingly loudly that the government is now using various agencies, whether it's the CBI, the IT department, the Enforcement Directorate, Delhi Police, in various cases, is using agencies to systematically go after the opposition to voice cases against them and to use these agencies for uh, its own political gain. Um, on the other side, the government says and the BJP says that, look, this is all crazy. These are just anti-corruption measures that are being done. Wrongdoers cannot take shelter behind words like the politics of vendetta. Wrongdoers must be handled. And by the way, they also say that this is something that, that the Congress Party and others have also done in the past. Worth just looking at some of the details. Why is it that these charges are coming? If you take a look at it, in the recent time, a large number of opposition leaders have been, been have had the central agencies and others coming after them. Most recent case, of course, was Karnataka, where Mr. D.K. Shiv Kumar, Congress leader, raided, and he was raided at a time when that entire Gujarat crisis was at its peak. So that's that timing led to lots of questions, if nothing else. Then, of course, you've just had that entire situation in Bihar. Lalu Yadav and his family and all the steps that have been taken against that eventually <coughs> led Bihar to come across to the BJP or the NDA camp. And again, questions were raised about that. But you can carry on. Tamil Nadu, uh, Vijay Bhaskar, what happened out there in West Bengal, Sudhi Bandhupadhyay, members of the TMC, what exactly is going on there in Tamil Nadu, again, Karthi Chidambaram, all the factors that are taking place out there. Lookout notice just issued against him, Haryana, BS Huda. And then, of course, Delhi. I see, I mean, I'm about to come to Ashish Khetan, who I can see there standing and, and nodding his head. But yeah, I mean, Manish Sisodia, Satendra Jain, many others, 13 Aam Aadmi Party MLAs have actually been arrested. Now, I'm going to come to what the government's going to say. They're going to say many of these may well be genuine cases, so why not? But what the opposition sometimes says is, here's why we are calling this the politics of vendetta. What happens when there are charges against BJP leaders or government leaders? Panama Papers case, whether it's the 2007 hate speech cases, the PDS scam case, Vyapan scam, Sharda scam, Lalit Modi, all of these cases which involve the opposition don't seem to be seeing quite that much effort. Now, by the way, I'm talking about the central government right now. The situation gets flipped a little when you come to the states and the minute you're having a state which is ruled by the opposition, then vendetta politics takes another turn. We've just seen Prakash Singh Badal accusing the Punjab government of saying there is vendetta politics that is being practiced against me and this is wrong. And somewhere along the way, I would like to introduce what is perhaps the worst part or the worst type of vendetta politics that there can be, which is outright violence. And we're seeing a lot of that in Kerala right now. We've been seeing the RSS, for example, saying its workers are being systematically hunted down and killed. You're seeing it elsewhere also, not perhaps to that same extent, stones being thrown on, Ra on Rahul Gandhi's car, motorcades, and so on and so forth. All right, lo lo lots clearly to talk about. So let me start by welcoming all of our guests. Joining us from Gujarat, Jaina Ryan Vyas, uh, senior leader of, of the, the Gujarat BJP. It's, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Manish uh, uh, Tiwari is with us here, spokesperson of the Congress Party. Ashish Khetan is here representing the Aam Aadmi Party. It gives me a great pleasure to, to, to have with us Vikas Singh, senior advocate of the Supreme Court, also with us here in the, in the studio. Uh, we are being joined by Zafar Sareshwala, uh, joining us from Mumbai. He's uh, the CEO of the Parswari Corporation and been a big supporter of, uh, of Narendra Modi. Professor Manoj Jha, national spokesperson of the RJD. I'm just seeing him, him, him joining us as well. So thank you so much uh, for, for being with us. And uh, Prashant Jha, associate editor of the Hindustan Times, is with us here as well. And joining us from Silicon Valley, must be really crack of dawn out there, but Jirajit Sen Mazumdar, IT professional, has a very strong view on all of this stuff and says, what vendetta politics? If somebody is guilty, they should be, they should be punished. Jaina Ryan Vyas, why don't I start off with you? I've never seen a, a government which is that keen on saying we must not only rule at the center, all states, there's a real desire to make sure that all states, that the country should really be Congress moved and perhaps opposition moved. Is that being taken too far now? Out of the long introduction that you gave, I'll just pick up one example which you gave the last. That was regarding D.K. Shivkumar. Now understand that there is some offense 
there are some incriminating documents there is a cash huge cash haul which the income tax department is able to find 60 uh, the locations are being searched for that out of which one happens to be Eagleton Resort. Most of the time, D.K. Shukuma spends is, is, is being interrogated at his residence. But just because making this a point and making this a point that incidentally so, so happened that the Gujarat MLAs which were, who were General taking, Angie, uh, because of the... But General Anji, if I can interrupt you, that's... ...of the Congress in Gujarat. Yeah, General Anji, that's why I don't want to get too much into one specific case because if somebody does something wrong, that person should face the consequences of the law. That's the first thing. So that's why I don't want to get into it. Eventually, I guess the courts will prejudge on all of these issues. But it's a, it's a question of an overall pattern that I think we need to look at. And it's a pattern that's been come up in the past. It used to be raised in the UPA case also, and I'll come to some details on that. Is there a pattern that, by and large, the opposition should be put on the back foot by using agencies, uh, what are sometimes called, I mean, they are called agencies. They call caged parrots sometimes. I think that wherever something is happening, there is a concrete evidence of some wrong being done. And just because somebody is in opposition, just because somebody is in a different political ideology, I think to make out a case that this is a case of overall, there is a, there is a pattern and there is an overall uh, uh, kind of a blueprint that is emerging that shows that it is a political vendetta. I think it is taking the things too far. So if the person is innocent, let him face the uh, law and let him come out clean. So I don't think there is any substance in the uh, opposition's charges which they are making out. They have used similar tricks much harshly in past and they have been guilty of doing so many things which I'm not, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you when, if it is required, which okay. are far more harsher than what they are today complaining of. So I yeah. think this is simply opposition strategy that they should not be touched. Whatever are the wrongs, they should be permitted to escape with whatever wrong they have done when they were in the ruling party. Manish Tiwari, the phrase caged parrot came up during the days of the UPA. And here is a tweet that we actually found. It's a very interesting tweet. The CBI has become the Congress Bureau of Investigation. Nation has no faith in it. I tell the center, don't show us fear of the CBI. Guess who? Narendra Modi. Uh, 1.33 p.m. 24th of June 2013. So the charges have sometimes been thrown the other way. It's become the Communal Bureau of Investigation now. And the reason why I say that, let me take you to the specific Gujarat example. Congress MLAs were intimidated, coerced, attempted to be bribed in Gujarat. We went and complained to the Election Commission. We flew our MLAs out, kept them in Bangalore. And what do you have after that? an income tax raid on the gentleman who is hosting those MLAs, who happens to be a minister, who is also the chairman of the Karnataka Pradesh uh, election committee, which Karnataka is also going into polls you know, in early next year. And you have vendetta let loose. State government is not in, uh, informed. Central forces are taken without informing this, uh, the state government. The constitution is trampled upon. And then what Mr. Arun Shori rightly described as North Korean television channels are deployed in order to float a canard that 8 crores, 10 crores has been seized from this That's minister. What Mr. Vyas is saying. And it has here, been seized. here is the panchnama of DK Shiv Kumar's residence. The raid conducted on DK Shiv Kumar's residence, it says not a single paisa has been seized. Okay. And, I, and, 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 and I was allow trying me to, to avoid arguing. I was trying to, to uh, uh, avoid so, trying so, cases. So, so therefore, not, not a Korean single China paisa China has been seized from his residence. So what you do is, you raid 60 people, you seize money from somebody's house or the other, you say that they are somehow vaguely connect, uh, connected, and say we've seized okay. 10 crores of rupees. I mean, this is the most pathetic Man form of fascism Manish. which has been let loose on this country. There is a great evil which stalks this land, and it is not about politicians. What about NDTV? What was NDTV's fault that you guys got raided? Primarily because they don't like the sound of your voice. So anybody like who's sound. not in sync with them needs to be silenced. That okay. is the no, entire sorry. DNA of this government. 
Unfortunately, okay, I was trying to avoid. Yeah, so but but, trying, but, but hang on. the thing is, I was trying to avoid making it about <laughs> NDTV. I'm not making like, it about NDTV. I've just given it as one of the many examples also, of intimidation and coercion which has been okay, let loose. So intimidation, coercion, but okay, look, let me come back to the point. I was trying to avoid a making it not about NDTV and b about making it about uh, any sort of a sort of a trial here because. This is not a North Korean channel, and I am not a. See, their only defense was Vikram. Uh, 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 so only, I don't know who's guilty or not guilty. No, no, I mean, only, I know that any TV is not no, no, guilty, no, no. but other than that, I don't know. No, their only defense for the raid on DK Shiv Kumar was that look, this guy is a tax evader, so therefore we've gone after him. Okay. He can't Jedi hide behind the political okay. subterfuge that this is vendetta. And what do you get at the end of it? A punchnama which says that not okay. a single person is free. I don't want to try any each of these cases. I will be here till for another <laughs> six months. My friend, Mr. Manish Tiwari is a very, very, is a very, very shrewd and eminent lawyer. He is forgetting that when you are making an argument, if if I, he was my lawyer and if I had gone through similar problems. He would have come up saying that where is, if you have alleged me of being bribed, if you have alleged me of being threatened, which they did going to the election commission, where are the proof? Okay. They just simply make uh, allegations. Okay. The election commission is the highest constitutional authority which goes into the allegations made by them. There is not a single proof they are able to produce. General Tell them G, what we proof gave they evidence to, to the election, election commission. commission. We gave MLAs attested mean, affidavits right? from our MLAs, names of officers, names of BJP functionaries who were okay. approaching our MLAs with 15 crores. Why okay. didn't you Sapphire, go and raid them? Those this, people who were offering this, bribes and inducements. Law, law, you know, why money, do you go and raid a person who was unconnected by, and finally, after law, floating uh, canards they, for two days, you evidence. come up with a punchnama which you, says nothing has been seen? No money, no bullion, nothing at all? You, so, so you therefore, I mean, look at the me. absurdity of it. When we last no, debated no, no, no. it, you were you saying 8 or 10 crores was recovered that, from his house. I am now showing you the evidence that act, punch nama, the, which says nothing was recovered, about, either from a bank or a residence. Okay. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. You gentlemen. know, go by the law of evidence. You know, so I'm going by the law of evidence. It's your punch nama. Your government, your incompetence. Gentlemen, gentlemen, one thing. Why are you trying to solve the problem? Make your arguments based upon these kind of things. Go to the election commission. You have gone to the election commission. Obviously, okay. where else will we go to Narendra Modi who is unleashing the vendetta? Okay, can I just press the pause button on that particular uh, uh, argument just for a second? Let me get Manoj, Professor Manoj Jain, who's made a similar charge. You know, there have been charges against RJD, but ever since the events in Bihar took over, you, sir, have been writing articles and saying repeatedly that it is a systematic uh, part of the politics of the government now to use agencies to get their political motives across. There is something in the statistics we call coefficient of correlation. You know, louder the voice of the opposition. And maximum chances are tomorrow either IT, ED or CBI. The new alliance partners of BJP shall be after you. And out of 29 states and 7 UTs, I was just trying out, is there any opposition leader behind whom there is not, not either all of these agencies or one of them. That tells you that the rule of law in this process is being compromised. It's a 15th, 16th century phrase, which means the government based on principles of law, not on principles of men. Here it is working on the disposition of men or inclination of people who are at the helm of the power. And that, that is a, scare, a scary proposition, Vikram. Because there are many cases I know in Laluji's case, may not stand one day scrutiny in the court of law. But what do you do? Before the raids take place, there are television channels, they would deny the entire opposition. Bipaksh mein sab chor hai. But what, what disturbs us most, that you know something, information is selectively leaked. I know, legally we can fight, but this is more of a political fight. They cannot deal with their opposition with political vocabulary, political instrument. And look what have, what have they done behind the facade of a case against Tejasvi Yadav. Okay. They lost the election, they formed the government. It is the first but political okay, but party frankly, in the history but of the frankly, world. But, which right, yeah. forms government Why they formed the government is also partly your fault. I mean, the, poli the politics of it were very clear-cut. Congress should have moved faster, you should have moved faster, things should have been done. So they formed the government partly because of the sloth of everyone else. We know we are, we are fighting a political party like BJP with crores and crores and crores of rupees, which can use these agencies as their front. We know, we have very few television public sphere spaces where we can speak our mind. We know it's a very difficult battle. But let me tell you, Germany was equally difficult. 
we shall fight and we shall win. I mean, Germany is not the best of examples. Germany did have to go through a world war before things changed out here. So I certainly hope so that that's not going to be a parallel that you're going to be drawing on because, uh, yeah, a lot happened. Um, Jurajit Sen Mazumdar is hearing all of this and looking slightly bemused. Do you think some of these examples are going too far? See, uh, Vikram, it's very clear, right? For me, it's uh, like an epitome of hypocrisy. Let it be very, very straightforward. You know, this guy, Narendra Modi ji, after, you know, such a huge mandate, the historic mandate he got and came. Why? Because people understood, like, uh, six decades of corruption is a, let's give a vote to this person to kind of clean that system. And what we are hearing now, Vendetta and all, is nothing but the last resort of corruption. They have looted the country for the six decades and now trying to kind of, kind of, you know, mesmerize the mind of people. Nothing like that. Okay? And it's not, it's not, you know, you have to understand the total thing. It's, it's a 360 review that he's trying to bring. You talk about bringing transparency through, you know, digitization or demonetization. It's all in the same direction to make the system transparent. And if we are talking that if a corrupt minister has to be hounded, that's also part of the same cleaning up system. You know, now with kind of we are, what we are trying to do when, you know, if someone is trying to make the system, obviously someone, few people won't be happy. But if you try to kind of judge it saying that, hey, are you, are you talking that, you know, the Narada and Sarada that happened in Bengal? Sarada, Ma Sarada, I'm coming from Calcutta. We used to know Sarada as a Ma Sarada and that become a, you know, the new name of a jit fund. So that's kind of to completely change the you know the system of a, you know of a state. Or you talk about what happened to Shiva Kumar. These are all real places. You know, if we okay. talk about, are we talking that what happened to Mr. Kalmadi and the Commonwealth game is not a corruption? When this gentleman talks about the largest mandate in history, this is in fact the smallest mandate in 70 years. Mr. Narendra Modi got the least number of votes which any government has got. You know, in the last okay. 70 years, which has formed I'm, a government on its own. So, therefore, there's a factual clarification about historic mandate. Hang on, hang on, hang on. 284. Now yes. that, that, no, no, like, Manisha are really no, playing no, with no, words. What no, do no, form the government on its own? No, they no, are com so, they are coalition no, governments but, which have but come Vikram, together. But, Vikram, if you look at the percentage of votes, okay. BJP, I, I don't in terms get of I have, percentage I have lots of, of votes, lots of, has got the minimum number okay, of votes have, that any government geez, has got, which has formed the government on its own in the past 70 years. Historically, the Congress has been getting over 350 seats. So, what is this 284 as a historic? He got that we are talking about. Why are we arguing and, and, and the minimum in terms of votes. He got 282 seats, you got 44. That's where that no, mandate ended. You know, I thought I'm, somebody in Silicon Valley got could at least get his numbers right. You know, yeah, that's what Manish, I was pointing Manish, out. Manish, he got 282 seats, that's you got 44 right. seats. But, but also the but minimum number of votes acknowledge that. Okay, I'm not now. saying that he didn't get 282 seats. All of them sit in parliament, absent themselves. And that's why their bills fail.